Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Program where I want you to remember that wine is not a mystery. It's just a beverage. And as promised, today we are going to continue with the theme of Spanish wines. And as I pointed out in the last episode, now, Spanish wines are a huge, huge value play. Uh, you get some great wines for under $20. Both of these are under $20. And this time we're going to be talking about the grape Monastrel, also known as Muvedra. In fact, that's the common name you'll hear is Muvedra. We always shorten it up when we say Muved. It's used in Chateauneuf de Pop, the Côte de Rhone. A lot of Muvedra is used there. In Provence, uh, they use Mouvedre to make uh, the uh, rouge, the, the, the red wines, and also some of them use Mouvedre to make some of the most famous rosé you will ever put your lips to. Some of the best, actually, and famous. Tempier from Bandol <coughs> uses Mouvedre as their base for their uh, rosé. So, Mouvedre and then uh, Jancis Robinson in her latest book on grapes, and grape varietals uh, pointed out that Monastrel was the original name for the grape so you know I mean I don't think you're ever going to get away from people saying I love to say Mouved. Doesn't that just sound cool? Mouved. Instead of Monastrel. But that can confuse consumers. I know you probably get confused with that. You see what, what's Monastrel? You might even say what is Mouvedra. It's okay but uh, if you like you know, a little bigger style wines, not necessarily jammy, but just big, big shoulders, big shoulders. Monastrel is the grape that'll do it for you, Mouvedra, whatever you want to call it. It gives wine strength, it gives it a nice backbone, and a lot of times they can be uh, somewhat fruit forward, that's for sure. So today we're going to look at two Monastrels from two different areas of Spain, but very close, their neighbors, Jumila, Humila, and Yecla. If you look at Spain, kind of shaped like that, you've got, um, you know, down in the southeast, you have, um, down in the southeast, you have uh, Jumila, and then right next to it is Yecla closer, and then Alicante right after that, so they kind of border each other. Uh, kind of a hilly area, uh, produces some fantastic wines out of both areas, and they're becoming more and more uh, famous, uh, those particular regions of Spain. As we talked about yesterday, I mean a lot of these regions are um, really up and coming in Spain. But the key is is that both of these roll in at just under 17 bucks, which is a good play. The first one we're going to try is the Venus Vino Sinlay 2011 uh, 100% Monastrel from Yecla, Spain. So there's your label. Has a nice big M on the front. And uh, Vino Sinle, uh, I love their wines. This is old vine, Muvedra. Vines are uh, 40 years old, which is, you know, as we all know, or maybe you don't know, the longer, the older a vine gets, the more concentration sometimes minerality depending on how deep the roots go that's a debate for another day uh, that whole terroir thing and minerality is constantly debated why not you gotta have something to talk about in the wine world besides just plain old good juice right you have to have something else to banter about let's see what we get on the nose almost like a it's like now this is not cork, this is not a corked wine, but it smells like brand new cardboard to me, you know, like a brand new cardboard box. I'm definitely getting some cherries in there. Little blackberry components of cherries and blackberries come through. It's not jumping up and kicking me in the in the nose, that's for sure. A little challenged. But that cardboard element is funny. It's just, it's there. It's definitely a big part of the nose. 
Now granted, these have not been opened a long time, only about uh, 45 minutes, which is longer than, and we've talked about, longer than most of you will wait after you uncork your wine. It's always a good idea to give it a little breathing time. So, like I said, nothing jumping out of me. I get a little bit of black licorice starting to come through now. Let's see what we get on the palate. It's got some alcohol on it. I think I looked at this. 14.5. Not uncommon for a Monastrell from Yaklar or Jamila. But this goes into the delicious category. If you guys want a wine that's absolutely delicious, this is it. And that's one of the things I like about Monastrell. When you want a little bit of that ramped up fruit, this has got a lot of like ripe blackberries, little underlying licorice notes in there. I get some current action going on, but the blackberry is a predominant part of this one. There's some minerality that comes through at the back end for sure. I like that. It gets this like little it's not like crushed rock, but it's a almost like a, a little minerality with some uh, white pepper action, which you wouldn't believe how many customers come into my department and say, do you got a wine? Do you have a wine in your department that has a lot of white pepper on it? Always, that's like, wow. A lot of people like that flavor profile. You get that out of Zinfandel sometimes. You get that out of Grenache. This one has it. It's not a predominant, but it's lingering on my tongue right now. It's like somebody sprinkled a little bit of, you know, I had some blackberry juice and it's a little bit of white pepper on it. It's hanging around. I like that about this wine. Very polished tannins. You know, it's just, it's, it's smooth, but it's also got some structure. It's got some muscle to it. You can taste that in there. Good structure, but it, it doesn't have that grippy tannin action like the Riojas that I tasted the other day. It's just smooth and structured. It's kind of like a, you know, one of those glinting, beautiful buildings you see in a city that's just architecturally beautiful. But you know there's a lot of concrete, there's a lot of steel in that wine. This one has that structure, but it's beautiful on the palate. I mean, it's really polished. Yeah, I would say sweet tannins for sure. There's that sweet element right up in front, the part of my the front of my palate that picks up that sweetness. It's tickling it constantly, but it never goes jammy. It's not in the jammy category. It just has those sweet tannins. It's very delicious, but it finishes with that nice little bit of pepper, a little bit of structure, a little bit of minerality. I like this wine. It rolls in at I did I mention it rolls in at fifteen dollars that's a good that's a great value for what you're getting on this wine I'm gonna give it a B plus I like the wine I think you should look at it look out for that one Venus Sinlay 2011 Monastrell it said it only spent uh, I was looking at the back oak, oak age for three months in French oak barrels and I wouldn't say they're barriques I wouldn't say they're smaller barrels they're probably bigger barrels uh, but whatever they did, they did it right. Like that wine. Definitely seek it out if you want a little bit of deliciousness without getting jammy. It would go well with food. I mean, that's what I'm looking at there. It's delicious, but it would match up nice with a steak or some stew or whatever you want to have with it. This time of year, you might be looking for a wine to go with those things. It'd go good with tacos. It would go good with pizza. It's just a great bottle of wine. Let's move on. I already gave it a rinse. Got to remember to rinse. 
This is the Juan Gill 100% Monastrel Muvedra. Sorry, Jancis. From Humila or Jumila. We used to pronounce the J in English, which reminds me, I have a good friend, Alan, who knows French really well, and I'll say, well, how do you say this French word? He's kind of my mentor when it comes to French, and he'll give it all the inflections of the French, and I'll say, now, how do you say that in English? <laughs> you know, because, you know, how would we say it using the English vernacular? Um, we would say Jumila in English, but no doubt in Spanish, it's Humila. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty, I'm willing to bet on that. So they're next door neighbors, Yekla, Humila, right next to each other, southeastern Spain. So they definitely reflect the weather, the humidity. They're closer to the water, so there's that cooling climate that affects it. All of those things affect the grapes there. Let's see what we get on the nose with this one. This one's a lot more perfumed right off the bat. This one kind of has a mocha, chocolate, blackberries, rose petal, tobacco. Very, I mean, these aromas are like really, really nice. It's, you know, it's like you, you run across something you really like to smell, like a bunch of roses. Uh, we went to some rose garden in, um, up in, where was that? In Canada. We went to some castle there and they had a nice rose garden. I loved it. I mean, just the perfumed roses was, I could have stayed there for a long time. It was very, very nice. This has that kind of a nose. It's just nice to smell. A little bit of current. It's very deep, kind of sensuous on the nose. It's one of those kind, kinds of wines. And, and again, I just, you know, take time to smell the wine. I mean, it just enhances your experience. And, you know, don't even worry about what anybody else thinks. In fact, they'll probably think you're pretty cool that you're sitting there smelling the wine for such a long period of time. Yeah, this is a really, really nice nose. I get a little bit of alcohol on it. It's not definitely not prominent, but I, I get it. Let's see if we can find the alcohol content without making you guys wait too long. 15% ramped up a half a percent above the other one. And always remember, they have about a percent of wiggle room. Usually they go on the downside of that. So this could be higher. They don't always do that. Um, certainly they went to 15, so they're not afraid to go up that high. That could account for some of that aromatics in the wine. And, and just remember, never judge a wine by the alcohol content on the label. Because many times these producers are able to take a high alcohol wine and just make it very balanced and it doesn't come through on the palate. So don't just look at the label, see, oh, it's got 15%, I'm not going to try it, it's way too alcoholic. <laughs> don't do that because you, you'll miss out sometimes on fantastic wine. Now, I, I will agree with you. And sometimes they can be alcoholic on the palate. And, it, you know, you don't want to waste your money, obviously. So find somebody that knows about that wine, can tell you about that wine. Say, no, it doesn't show the alcohol. Or even in this video, like that one was 14.5, I did not get alcohol on the, on the palate. Seriously. So, you know, don't always judge it by that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see what we get on the palate with this one. Okay, guys, if you don't like alcohol, don't buy this wine. It definitely has the heat on the back end. But, that being said, it's, it's very delicious on the palate. The alcohol is high. This would be a tough wine. Don't drink this wine on an empty stomach. It'll probably kick your butt. It might knock you on your, you know what, your derriere. If you drink a couple of glasses of this, the heat is there. I can still feel it. It's crawling up my face, actually. 
but is very delicious on the palate. Big fruit, as you would imagine, with that type of alcohol. A lot of uh, currants and blackberries and boysenberry all over the palate. I mean, it's got some interesting, I, I get a little bit of like a, a cinnamon roll play without the frosting. It just has that kind of a, just barely underneath, like a baked goods, like cinnamon roll type thing going on. A lot of boysenberry, blackberry, currant. Very delicious at the finish. I get the wood. There's a little bit of wood tannin, some minerality, a little bit of a crushed rock element on the back end. The heat is still there. But it's so delicious. It's so delicious that... Um, you might be able to deal with the alcohol. Now, that being said, if you don't like that heat, then don't buy it. But I know there's a lot of you out there that, like myself, I love Zinfandel. I know Zinfandel is going to be a little bit hot from time to time, but that's why I drink it. I'll admit it. Sometimes I like a ramped up wine. You know, I mean, it's like complaining that Jack Daniels has a little too much alcohol in it. Come on. I like Jack. I like Maker's Mark. I like bourbon. Period. So I always, I always know when a guy's a bourbon drinker because they like these styles of wine. They're used to it. You know, I drink my bourbon straight. So, uh, you know, I like, I like scotch. I drink it straight. So these higher alcohol wines, this is not out of balance. Now, there is a heat on the back end, but you never you never feel like it's out of balance, like it's a prominent part of the wine. The fruit is the prominent part of this wine, for sure. There's a little bit of black licorice comes through on the back end. The minerality is there, there's a little bit of a grip. This is a good food wine. You definitely want something a little richer than this. This would be great with duck. I'd love to have this with duck. Something rich like that. This would be perfect with that. It would be a nice complement. Good balance across the palate. Yeah, there's a little heat on the back end, but it's not a predominant part of the wine. Good bottle of wine. I'm going to give it a B plus, A minus. I think I gave this one a B plus. Both excellent wines. They both live up to what I expect from a Monastrell, from that part of Spain, and I think they're good value play. The uh, one gill rolls in at $16, so it's just, so we had $15 and $16. Great values. If you want a big wine, you don't want to spend a lot of money, that's where I'd go. So thanks for joining me. Um, I appreciate it. And next episode, since we're on the whole... We go from Rioja to Monastrell. Let's do a little Zin episode, since that's one of my favorite wines to drink. That's why I hardly, I can't believe I found three bottles of Zin to try. So that'll be the next episode. Thanks for watching. Cheers, and here's to keeping the snob out of wine.